The thing I found about standing on your head is that it takes a triangle and that gives you your balance. And you see, for me, that's really, really important. And in life, you need balance. You need a balance of being a part of a family, a balance of being a part of the community. You need a balance in your ability to help others and yet take care of yourself. And so standing on my head just reminds me that your life has to have balance in order to be fruitful. Well, I was born in Nebraska on the second floor of a parsonage. I had two older brothers that uh, I adored. Wonderful, marvelous parents that taught me about having faith and they taught it by example. I went to Nebraska Wesleyan to be a teacher and that's where I met my husband, Ted Russ. We've been married 66 years. We got married our senior year. We are both phys ed teachers. We got a, a major in physical education. There was a school in Auburn that needed a history teacher, basketball coach, and a girls phys ed teacher, which was us. Christy, our oldest child, she was born in 1961. Then four years later, Richie was born. And then five years later in 69, Todd was born. I started out as a physical education teacher. And from there, I uh, went back to get my master's in guidance and counseling. So I taught eighth grade English and was a guidance counselor, which I loved working with the kids. We were there for 31 years. At the end of those 31 years, my husband said, I could choose where we would retire. He added to that, I just want to be able to fish and golf year round. Well, that's not Nebraska. Now, I knew about Lake Waccamaw because this is where he's from. He grew up 15 miles from here. And so once we had a family, then we would come here every single summer and uh, you can't help but fall in love with this beautiful lake. Tell me where we are and where we're going today. Okay, we're here on the corner of Lakeshore uh, and we are headed to the Depot Museum. It's one of my favorite places in Lake Waccamaw because it tells such a history of this area. We are blessed to be able to have a home on the lakefront and so that uh, we get to uh, watch our grandkids uh, get out and swim and water ski and just truly enjoy this beautiful, beautiful lake. My husband and I have a bed and breakfast. At this point in our lives, my husband's 95, I mean, I'll be 88 in another week. And uh, we just don't care if we have a, a lot of people, but we keep it open because we meet so many interesting people. 
another part of this area that I love is that there is an Indian community that is north of here that is a very strong, loving community of the Wakamasua. We're here now and about to show you uh, a treasure of this community, the Lake Wakaba Depot Museum. Pardon? Who are we meeting here today? We're going to meet Karen Gore, who's our curator, has been curator for quite a few years, and she does a marvelous job. We could not ask for a better curator. Karen is just excellent and an artist. Hello, hello. How are you? I'm fine, and how are you? And this is Karen, the curator I was just telling you about, <laughs> bragging about. <laughs> the Depot Museum was a group of women started the Women's Club to keep the history of Lake Waccamaw. When it really took wings, a gentleman named Johnny McNeil, he and Frank Galt would fry fish every Friday night. They called it the fish fry. Are you going to the fish fry? And people would come to his pier and it was strictly visiting. There was no program, nothing. It was just community. And so this community became very connected a lot because of Johnny McNeil and the Depot Museum. And anybody is welcome to join the Depot Museum. And this community is very supportive of its library and, and the Depot Museum. I got involved in the Depot because when I first came, I joined Women's Club because I think it's important to be a part of the community that you live in. If you want the community to grow, you become a positive part of it. And so the depot became very important and I actually served as the chairman of the Depot Museum for two different terms. My mom was an English teacher, just the most caring, loving, helping person, always, always giving. My mother had no idea the influence that she had on her grandkids who saw her as the role model of Christianity in doing for others as you want them to do unto you. For me, a religion is a way of living, a way of living positively, and in believing in a power that's greater than I am, and that will help me through, and that doesn't mean that he's going to necessarily change it. It means that he'll carry me through. Our son Todd died uh, in April. He was only 52, and that's the hardest thing I've ever had to go through. And it's pretty hard to stay positive at that point, but you have to. And, and the way I have been able to get through with it and handle it is my faith in God and, and my thinking positive, thinking, what would Todd want me to do? And I see him in nature. I see him in, in birds. On Mother's Day this year, I opened the back door and I, and just the day before my daughter said, you know, Todd came to visit me, I heard an owl. Well, that morning I opened the door and stepped out the back door of my home and, and I heard, who, who, who? And I said, 
You, 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 Todd. Hey, thanks for wishing me a happy Mother's Day. And turned around and went back in. When I think about him, I, I shed a tear now and then, and when, particularly when I see his picture, and uh, uh, I shed a tear, but then I snap out of it and then start talking to him and telling him good morning and, and saying, you know, guide me through this day, help me get through it, and, uh, and away we go. Very often, on his way home from work, he had a phone in his car, and he'd push the button that said, Mom, and he would call me. And I'd say, how was your day? And it was either good or not so good, but generally it was good. And he would tell me about anything special that happened at work. And for a mom, kids don't realize that is so neat when your kids share with you what they did that day, wow. And want to know what I did and care about what dad and I did today. All three of our kids are so, uh, are very caring and loving and, uh, and do look after us and uh, let us know how much they love us. First time I ever preached was in uh, in high school that our, we had Youth Sunday and they couldn't get anybody else to preach. So Dad said, "Why don't you do it?" And I think I was a freshman in high school. I okay. I mean, you know, I I'll, I'll try anything. So I did, and I enjoyed it. I enjoy the creativity of it. It's one of those things that you just kind of get something in your mind that you want to a point you want to drive when our pastor is gone, uh, rather than having to call somebody uh, from afar or, you know, from the, uh, they'll ask me to preach. My dad used poetry almost every Sunday in his sermons, and I grew to love poetry, so I write poetry. One of the things that I loved that he said, my favorite, I guess, of, of most things he said, he said, if somebody says it ought to be done, then I ought to do it. I want to be the ought. My scripture this morning comes from Corinthians, a scripture that you've heard over and over again. It's one of my favorites. Be true to yourself. Be true to what you believe. Read the scriptures. Let it speak to your heart and believe in yourself. We look at the scripture and what does that say to me? Not judging those who do not agree with us, but loving them, making peace with them, I want you to be very positive about what's going on, about what's happening. And I want you not to judge. Judge not, that ye be not judged. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. My dad was my idol. When he passed away, we cleaned out his desk and I got a whole stack of his sermons. And I love to, to now even go, go through and, and see what he, what he talked about. It was always the power of positive thinking, thinking positive, doing things that are gonna help people, forgiving, being loving, caring. I, personally would not be the person I am without my faith. God is, is very important to me. And, and I feel like uh, that this creation that he has given us, I, I wake up every morning, of course, 
you look at this, how can you not just say, thank you, Lord? Thank you. Thank you that I'm here, that I have this beauty that I can see every day, that I have children that love me, that I have friends, that I can help them and they help me. That's what it's about, is, is to love everybody. And life is about balance. And so standing on my head just reminds me that your life has to have balance in order to be fruitful. <laughs> Go, Mom! <laughs> the larger that triangle, the better the balance. And our life is the same. The more activity, the more variety we bring into our life, the more balance we have and the happier we can be. And of course, the whole thing circles around being positive. Positivity is the key to my life.